Welcome to IPSX TV Live on a very special day for the IPSX team. My name is Paul Shearer and I'm delighted to host to be your host for this special live streamed program. IPSX is the world's first securities exchange dedicated to commercial real estate and it's also the first new stock exchange to launch in the UK for seven years and it joins a very elite group of stock exchanges regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. I'm talking here about exchanges like the London Stock Exchange, the London Metals Exchange, Euronext London, and going live today, IPSX. So in just under half an hour, the market will open for trading for the very first time. But before that, let's take a look at that very first admission to IPSX. I'm delighted to welcome today the first admission on IPSX, Mailbox REIT PLC. Mailbox REIT is the owner of The Mailbox, an iconic mixed-use asset in the centre of Birmingham. And this is exactly the kind of asset we were hoping for when we first started IPSX. This admission will be on IPSX Wholesale, our market for professional investors. Many congratulations to the team. We're going to hear from Richard Croft, Executive Chairman at M7 Real Estate, but before we do, here's a short overview of the building. The mailbox is an iconic landmark building located on a 4.8 acre waterside site in the heart of Birmingham, the UK's second largest city. With 698,000 square feet of office-led real estate anchored by the BBC, and a complimentary retail and leisure offering, it is Birmingham's number one live, work, play commercial environment. I'm Richard Croft. I am the chairman of M7 Real Estate and also a non-executive director of IPSX. We decided to list the mailbox on IPSX, primarily actually because M7 is also a major investor into the exchange. The exchange itself has the capacity to become the single most important part of real estate capital markets infrastructure that has existed for several decades. So M7 acquired the mailbox specifically to list it on IPFX. And we believe absolutely wholeheartedly that the real estate market is ripe for disruption. So two things that are really important to understand about real estate investing. One is the frictional cost of it is huge. Unlike any other market in the world, to buy a piece of real estate in the UK and sell it you have 10% frictional costing, a combination of stamp duty land tax, agents fees, legal fees, etc. both sides of the trade. If you then add in the fact that real estate, because of the way that we trade it and we run it and the way the land registry works, etc., it takes two or three months to buy a major piece of commercial real estate. You have a situation where the frictional cost is exceptional and liquidity is very, very slim. So if ever a market was ripe for disruption, then real estate is it. Mailbox is a landmark building in the centre of Birmingham, about three minutes from New Street Station and close to the Bullring Shopping Centre. Birmingham is one of the UK's fastest growing economies. It is an office-led mixed-use building with 39 tenants anchored by the BBC, supported by an exciting range of restaurants, bars and other amenities, including an everyman cinema, and one of the largest car parks in the centre of Birmingham. About two and a half thousand people work there. It has very much been refocused to attract the creative industries, the media and tech businesses that are really boosting the Birmingham and West Midlands economy right now. And we have completely rethought the asset management strategy in the light of COVID and other changing work, working and lifestyles. Uh, we have repositioned the asset. We, we are converting at the moment about half of the former retail space into co-working offices, which will be managed by IWG. So we want it to become the premier live, work, play asset in Birmingham. What does it give for investors? Well, the net initial income yield paid quarterly will be 7%. And we expect that to grow to 11% over the next three years to deliver a total return to investors over that period of around 20%.
The building, as, we, as you know, is managed by M7. So we think we have a great building, great management, great uh, investment economics, together with, for the first time, instant liquidity through IPSX. A very compelling offer and one which we hope will begin to set the benchmark for the future of property investment. On behalf of everyone at IPSX, I'd like to wish Mailbox every success with their admission to the exchange. And I'd like to thank everyone who has worked very hard in making this day happen. Joining me live now in the studio here in Canary Wharf is the man that you've just seen in that pre-recorded Welcome to Mailbox video, Roger Clark, IPSX's Managing Director and Head of Capital Markets. Roger, welcome. Good morning, Paul, and good morning everyone who's watching. These must be very exciting moments for you. Very much so. Uh, it's been a long time to get here, a long journey, a lot of hard work by a lot of people, but uh, at last we're ready to go. Um, for those who don't know, tell us a little bit about the idea behind IPSX. Well, we're a, we're a stock exchange. Uh, at its simplest, we're a stock exchange, but for property assets, for large pieces of commercial real estate. Real estate is a big asset class. Uh, it touches all of us, where we live, where we work, shop, eat. Uh, we all use it and there's not really anything else that you could say that about. We all use it and yet it's very, very hard for most of us to invest in it. It's large, it's complex, uh, it, 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 it's, it's a liquid, it is expensive. And this idea to democratise access to real estate is something that the property industry has been dreaming about for 50 years. So what's the actual mechanism then for IPSX? How does that commercial real estate come onto the market? What so a building is put into a company holding structure. That's a normal company. Uh, as we've heard, it has a board, it has an asset manager, an auditor, a valuer. And that company lists on our exchange and those shares are sold to the public. And these shares, importantly, are then freely tradable. It's just like having shares in Marks and Spencers or Vodafone. And what do you think then, once the property is there and the market's up and running and people can buy and sell shares in individual properties, what do you think that brings to commercial real estate in the world of commercial property? Well, first and foremost, the most important thing is liquidity. The fact that these shares will be freely tradable. And because these shares are listed and trading every day, it brings price transparency as well. Uh, this is, this is a, a new thing. And access for small investors. You know, these shares can go into your SIP or your ISA. Uh, they're freely tradable. You can build now your own portfolio under your complete control. And it's all fully regulated by the FCA. And that's obviously now with this first listing, it's just getting started. Um, how long do you anticipate before you're uh, a fully operational market? I know that you've got very, very big plans. Uh, how long does that process going to take? Well, we have a big pipeline of assets coming behind this one. Uh, the first one was always going to be the hardest and the most momentous to, to get away. But that momentum will, will build and we're going to see now a steady stream of, uh, of, of new IPOs coming. Uh, lots to look out for. And as you said, with Mailbox, that's the, the kind of property you were looking for. It's an iconic central uh, Birmingham property, isn't it? It's perfect. It's 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 very large. It was it's 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 bigger than most people could ever manage to buy themselves. Um, it also will showcase the, uh, the the expertise of M7. You know, asset management is critical in in commercial real estate, and these large mixed use buildings with lots of tenants need need good management. So we've got a great manager. Uh, we've got a great board. It's a perfect first asset. And the manager is M7 Real Estate Management. The worst asset management team at M7. Yeah, exactly. M7 is a large pan-European asset manager, very well established. Proven track record. Absolutely. Been in that, yes. Um, well, let's uh, now just have a look back at the journey that's taken uh, such a long time to, to get to this first day of trading. Uh, earlier, I managed to talk to um, 
someone else from the IPSX team who had a very important role. So let's take a look at how the idea came to fruition. With me is Alan Ramsey, Chief Executive of IPSX UK. Alan, welcome. Thank you, Paul, very much indeed. Uh, it's clearly been quite a journey to get to this point. Uh, tell us about that journey. It has indeed been quite a journey, Paul, and I'd be the first to say that establishing a, a new stock exchange is really not a task for the, for the faint-hearted. Um, initially, we had a huge amount of work to do in securing our recognition from the FCA. Uh, firstly, for our prime firstly, market. The Financial Conduct Authority. Indeed, the Financial Conduct Authority, our uh, key regulator. Um, initially, for our prime market and thereafter for, for wholesale. And in the weeks and months following, there was then a huge amount of work associated with ensuring that we integrated our proposition with that of our key data and trading partners. Among them, Morningstar, uh, Fidesa, uh, and Golden Source. Our data integration offers the market the access and the transparency which is needed to ensure effective and orderly execution. And what about then the other members and all the other associated people that make the market function? How, how well, have you the, about the that? members, Paul, are absolutely the lifeblood of, of any exchange and IPSX is, is no exception to, to, to that at all. Um, and indeed in that context it's been particularly pleasing for me in recent weeks and months um, to see a steady stream of new joiners coming to the exchange. Um, among them we've had uh, Pello Capital, we've had uh, Hobart Capital, we've had Clear Capital, um, we've had Albert E Sharp, um, we've had Canaccord um, and most recently Blankton Sinkton. Um, These are brokers and wealth managers who connect. They, they, they are indeed. Um, what's been particularly gratifying is that uh, some of those I've just referenced um, have a strong regional presence, which is something we've particularly uh, appreciated. Um, but all of them, as you half suggest, Paul, all of them bring competencies and capabilities to the market, um, which is going to be very important to us in our secondary trading capability. And what about some of the ob other obstacles that you faced along the way? Because obviously we've been through quite a turbulent time, both we have. Brexit and COVID. How, how have the team dealt with that? Well, dealing with uh, Brexit first, I think it'd probably be fair to say that the, the impact of Brexit directly on IPSX has probably been fairly slight and actually fairly modest. But the broader business impact on the, the, the business environment is certainly something which has uh, which has impacted us in various ways, as indeed it has many, and there's no doubt that slowed our progress at, at various points. But if I then come to COVID, I think our experience there um, has probably been uh, not dissimilar to, 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 to many others. Um, initially, there was work for us to do, certainly ensuring that our remote working capability was uh, passing muster, which I'm very pleased to say that it did. Um, and then beyond that, um, there was then the obvious work for us to do um, in ensuring that um, our office presences were in the jargon we, we, have, we have now come to know and love was COVID secure. But as I, I reflect a little bit, Paul, and you mentioned the turbulence of the, the last couple of years or so, if I reflect on COVID and I reflect on Brexit and I reflect a little bit on some of the political turbulence which has been there as well, I mean, it's been particularly satisfying against that backdrop for those of us at IPSX to reflect today on the fact that um, we are welcoming our first issuer um, in Mailbox REIT PLC. Uh, this has been a very long time in coming. Um, it's a very exciting day for us at uh, IPSX. My colleagues and I are delighted to be um, associated with, uh, with Mailbox as our first issuer. And perhaps I could conclude my remarks this morning by just offering my warmest congratulations to the Mailbox team. Well, thank you very much, Alan, for the update and wish you the best of luck in the coming weeks. You're very kind. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Alan, congratulating the Mailbox team there, and I'm delighted to welcome a member of the team now, Ian Womack, who is a non-executive director on the board of Mailbox REIT PLC, and he's joining us by Zoom. Ian, welcome. Good morning, Paul. It's an absolute delight to be here on this, I mean, transformational day for real estate. Well, thank Could you for joining us this morning. Um, we saw in the welcome video at the beginning of the programme uh, that you aim for the Mailbox to become the premier live-work-play destination in Birmingham. So how do you set about that? How do you achieve that? Well, first we do. Um, and I think there are two fundamental criteria that we're, we're going to lead forward on. First, a very clear strategy. 
And second, uh, the right asset management team to put that strategy into place. And I know that uh, Roger's already mentioned M7. Uh, and maybe it would be helpful if I gave you an example of some of the things that are going to happen at the mailbox to, to take us there. Uh, first, um, we're going to convert the underperforming retail into trendy, trendy offices, which are going to be um, uh, operated by IWG using their Spaces brand. And that's going to create co-working, flexible space, short-term leases, long-term leases, uh, project space and so on, which is what op occupiers need and importantly complementing that very strong tenant base that already exists in the mailbox, the likes of the BBC, WSP, advanced uh, software, a lovely blend of uh, tech and media and professional services. And before I let you ask me the next question, just to say, uh, we're building on an incredibly strong base in that 92% of the rent has been collected at Mailbox in the last quarter, despite the COVID, uh, the COVID in disruption. Some impressive figures there. And you're touching on the idea that asset management is the, is the crucial part of commercial real estate, uh, the communication with tenants and so on. Tell us a little bit about how asset management plays into commercial real estate. Well, uh, asset management is always important, but when you have the opportunities that you have in the mailbox, it's never more important than here. Uh, when you look at the opportunities we've got to, to change that environment, to that live work play, uh, the tenant mix and the income. Um, so the asset manager's role is absolutely critical in helping the investor to spot the opportunity to design and create the space that the, 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 the new scheme demands to lease that scheme. Um, and then form, and this is important, lasting partnerships with the new occupiers as things move forward. Um, uh, and as you said, our vision is to create that at Mailbox. Um, and finally, Roger said it, I'll say it again, we need a first class team to do that. And we have just that in uh, M7, who've got a great track record. And also the other crucial element of commercial real estate or any real estate is location, isn't it? Tell us a little bit about Birmingham and what's happening there and why, why it's so special. Location, 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 the property mantra. Uh, it's in the first textbook. Um, well, you start with Birmingham being the country's second city, um, both in terms of population and GDP. So that's a pretty good start. There's a, a very long list of infrastructure investments planned for Birmingham. HS2 is on everybody's TV screen, uh, phase one completing, I think, in 2026. There's a big investment planned at the uh, airport, I, I, think, I think 500 million pounds over a decade or so. Uh, we've got the fastest growing financial and professional services sector outside of London. We've got five universities uh, with a very, very strong uh, talent graduate retention program because Birmingham is a nice place to live, play and work. Um, and where are we in Birmingham now? We've had 7% year on year rental growth uh, over the last uh, 12 months and an all time or 10 year low of a vacant space at 2.5%. So I think you'll probably agree that Birmingham is a really good platform to create what we want to do at the mailbox. Sounds like plenty happening there. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, uh, Ian. And uh, turn it to Roger now. Um, uh, M7 chose to list this on IPSX wholesale. Uh, why is that? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so Paul, <clears throat> we have two markets, uh, one called IPSX Prime, uh, one called IPSX Wholesale. I in many ways, they're very similar. They're, they both see market makers, they both have uh, I I IPOs going through the, uh, a very similar process. They're both regulated and liquid. Uh, a slight difference is that IPSX Wholesale uh, it, has an admission document rather than a prospectus. This is a slightly streamlined process. The admission document is approved by the exchange uh, rather than having to go through rounds with the FCA. So it's a little bit quicker uh, and it allows a little bit more flexibility to the issuer, uh, mailbox in this case, particularly in the amount of debts they can have. So they're able to have a little bit more leverage on wholesale and that allows their dividends to be a little bit higher as we heard from Stephen earlier, 7%. And the wholesale market is for professional investors. So it's it, it, assuming uh, that there are slightly more complex properties. Tell us a little bit about the kind of properties that you aim to see on wholesale. Yeah, in many ways, mailbox is, is, is probably a very simple vanilla version of a building to go on to wholesale. The other things we may see could be urban regeneration projects, 
uh, redevelopments, forward fundings, local authority partnerships. Um, in some ways, sl slightly longer term, more capital return focused strategies. The mailbox, on the other hand, is just a very high income, great yielding asset. And uh, we're turning now as well to the actual creation of the market. Um, let's examine some of the technical aspects of IPSX with some of the partners that have been involved in the development and delivery of the new exchange. I spoke to Russell Thornton, Head of Trading Strategy at IRES. Russell, what are some of the latest connectivity developments to a market like this? Um, I guess the first thing that we've done uh, within IRES is to integrate the IPSX pricing data into our central data feeds. Uh, this means that all prices will be disseminated to all of the IRIS trading services. Uh, and in fact, any client consuming our data feed within their own internal systems, which is relatively common in the retail market, uh, they'll also be able to access the IPSX pricing. Um, we've also ensured that the IRIS market makers, such as WH Island, are able to provide real-time electronic prices to those clients requesting them. This way, any existing IRIS clients can take advantage of the new market with virtually no change to their underlying technology. So who would some of these IRIS clients be typically? Just give us a, a broad outlook of, of who they are and where they are. Uh, on the network, there are around 60 retail brokers uh, and around 28 market makers. Um, that network forms around, or takes across around 80% of the UK retail electronic order flow. Um, so, what IPSX is effectively doing by embedding into this network is uh, plugging directly into an existing community of trading firms. And of course, one of the fundamentals of a market like this is, is security and, and the, the trust in the technology. What level of that is, is this uh, IPSX? Um, it's been running for a very long time under IRIS. Um, there is a huge amount of security around it. Um, not everybody can get access to it. Um, there's a lot of security and conformance testing that goes on for those member firms to get access to that network. Uh, but once they're on there, um, that community works in a very good way. So um, allowing the retail brokers and wealth managers on that network to submit their electronic quote requests to all of the market makers, uh, the market makers providing those prices back. So there's competition for the pricing there, which is good for the end investor. Uh, means that in the end, the retail investor getting access to IPSX gets the best pricing that they can possibly get. Well, I also spoke to Stéphane Leroy, Chief Revenue Officer at Quant House. So uh, tell us a bit first about Quant House, what it does and how it helps with issuers and investors. Yeah, uh, Quant House is a company which has been created now 16 years ago. And we are basically providing what we call next generation trading technology to the industry. So when I say the industry is both exchanges, sell side, buy sides. And we are helping in fact uh, uh, issuers and members as well as exchanges to get the best of the uh, trading technology available now to face growth. Tell us a bit more about the fit then with IPSX specifically as a, as a new exchange. I mean, IPSX, first of all, for us is a, is a, is a huge opportunity in the sense that uh, we have been working in this industry trying to not only help uh, 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 existing exchanges to um, uh, 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 grow and, and provide more accurate or faster signals to their um, uh, memberships, to their members. We have also, over time, helped a lot of new exchanges, which are quite well known for the moment, uh, 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 start their venture and start their business. I could name a few, such as BATS, for those who know the equity trading market in Europe, that is now called CME, uh, CBOE Europe, sorry, and in, has been created uh, uh, 10 or 12 years ago, and we uh, were working with them since the start. We have also worked with another 
uh, big exchanges now, which is uh, uh, known under the name of Turquoise, which is owned now by the LSE. So uh, at Quant House, we, we really uh, uh, are thrilled to work with new ventures. Uh, uh, and, and of course, all of them uh, is a, a huge success going forward. And we are uh, really uh, uh, looking forward to, to this uh, growing success with IPSX. So just picking up on that, what, what is the operational status of the QuantFeed API system? We have worked hard with the uh, IPSX staff and I would like here to take the opportunity to thank really the, uh, the IPSX uh, uh, staff because uh, we, have, uh, we have worked really wonderfully well over the, over the last uh, uh, couple of months to make sure that all testing and verification have been conducted uh, to make uh, a perfect, resilient and, 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 and effective uh, 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 environment for all issues and clients. And also what is, I think, very interesting is that the connectivity. Um, because Quant House is able to distribute the IPSX pricing feeds uh, and Quant House has a global reach because we have uh, a point of presence in every single big financial cities across the globe from Chicago down to Tokyo through Shanghai or Zurich or London. In other words, day one, anyone on this planet who wants to trade on IPSX can hook up to the nearest uh, financial data center uh, through the Quant House connectivity and will be able to trade on IPSX. And I think this is really great because this is state of the art type of technology and connectivity that are used by all exchanges across the global, all our clients across the global and IPSX clients will be able day one to leverage this huge and global reach and global infrastructure. So that's an impressive list of technology and technology partners there, but the market is also made up not just of technology, but uh, with a human element. Tell us a little bit more about the human element and the human component of IPSX. Well, we've heard a lot about how tra trading will work and trading. This is really important. This is what makes IPSX unique because this is the first time in a few minutes that um, equity stockbrokers will actually be able to provide people with access to, to what is a pure real estate investment. Uh, and, and critically, that will be done with market makers. You know, uh, today, Peel Hunts and WH Island will go up uh, and be making firm two-way prices in mailbox shares. This market will always be open. You will always be able to trade uh, and compare that with the, the catastrophe we've seen with the gating of retail funds um, for the last two years and several times in recent years, that's really important and unique. So how do you see this playing out today then? What's, the, what's your vision? Well, we've seen a really good level of demand. Um, I think as the uh, announcements that Mailbox has put out have shown, the um, deal has been um, oversubscribed uh, and slightly upsized. So a lot of people want to own these shares. And uh, I expect to see a little bit of trading today in the secondary market. Um, who knows how much, but I think we'll see some. And how long do you think before it settles down? I mean, obviously it's a market, so there's always trading, but how long do you think before it settles down to a sort of stable, uh, a, a stable market with this property? Well, you're, you're absolutely right. I hope there will always be trading. Um, what I don't think we'll see is a lot of volatility. I think one of the key things about our exchange, I mean, it's to just take this week, we've seen wild swings in American markets. NASDAQ has been up and down four or five percent over the days. We're not going to see that. This is a very simple asset backed structure. You're buying the mailbox. Um, so I don't expect to see volatility. And if people want to find out more, how do they get involved? What do they do? So here I have to say you should go to ipsx.com, our, our, our website, and there you will see information on all of the securities which are trading on our market. Um, you'll see information on all of the upcoming deals, IPOs which are in the pipeline. There are contact details of all of our member firms where you can open trading accounts. And if you have an ISA today, speak to your wealth manager. Okay, well, I'm going to stop you there because uh, I see from the clock that we're coming up to the opening. So um, 
It gives me very great pleasure to announce that we're just coming up to 9 a.m. on May the 14th, 2021, when IPSX, the world's first securities exchange dedicated to commercial real estate, will officially be open for trading. Well, we can hear the champagne corks popping all over the place, but uh, how do you feel? An exciting moment. Yeah, look, I'm really proud of um, everything that the team at IPSX have done. A lot of hard work by a lot of people to have got here. It's very exciting to be here in the heart of Canary Wharf to see the launch of London's newest financial market. So that's today. That's the launch. It's happening. What, uh, what next for IPSX? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we've got plenty to come. We're building now. We're going to build a real momentum. Uh, we've got lots of um, interesting assets in the pipeline, uh, a broad spread of things. Something that's going to capture everyone's imagination, I hope. We've got uh, regional offices. We've got serviced offices. We have some leisure assets, uh, a marina business, some sports stadiums something for everyone. Yes, because that, that was a thing that uh, from the single commercial asset, your criteria also allow a block of similar assets if it's a hotels or marinas. Is it more than one marina in several places? From a there, there isn't that particular case. Yeah, the idea is that the investor is able to understand the asset rather than just give their money to a manager to invest for them. Uh, and, and that understanding can extend to a portfolio as long as the assets are very homogenous within it. Okay. And uh, with that pipeline, what do issuers do? How long does the process take? What, if, if, say I own a commercial piece of real estate, a piece of commercial real estate, and I, so I, I want to list, what would I do and how long does that take? Well, again, get it, go to our website, ipsx.com. That will have lots of contact details. Get in touch with me and uh, my team will be happy to talk any potential issuer through the issues they need to be thinking about and planning for. And if that planning process is done efficiently, this could be done in as little as 10 to 12 weeks. And the, so there's a valuation process, there's a prospectus if you're going on to prime, but as you said earlier, the wholesale element is, is slightly less uh, complicated for, for commercial real estate owners? Yeah, I want to emphasize it. It's not as if there's any shortcuts in terms of disclosure or transparency from the investor point of view, but the process is only dealing with us at IPSX rather than with the FCA as well. And that just makes it a little bit simpler and easier. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, anything else that you want to say to the team today on this? Well, I want to congr congratulate M7 and the mailbox board again. Uh, you will always be remembered in history as the first people to list on IPSX. Uh, and I want to congratulate the team back at IPSX because it's been hard work, but we've done it. Yes, I've been talking to you for, for, you know, many times over the last year and a half as you've gone through so many different aspects and so many different crises, none of, not, not of your own making. Um, so congratulations to you. And uh, we, that's all from us here this morning. And I'd like to thank my guests, Roger Clark, for joining us and Ian Womack for coming in by Zoom. Uh, and I wish you all the very best in the coming days, weeks and months. Thanks for watching.